Hi. Group theory is an important mathematical tool used in physics. It's used extensively in quantum mechanics. My friend Paul Mursky, who is an expert on group theory, put together a mini lesson to explain many of the important concepts in group theory. It's a fantastic lesson, and we're going to watch it now. It comes from his website, symmetryoptics.com. I'll put a link to the full video in the description. Here is the definition of a group. A group is a set of elements with a binary operation and closure, an identity element, an inverse for every element, and associativity. Now, what, now with this definition, let's move on to an example so you can understand what it means and how it's used. We'll start discussing symmetry in terms of a simple example. Consider an equilateral triangle with its three vertices colored red, green, and blue. It can be in any one of these three possible orientations, or in other words, three possible states. For now, we're assuming that the triangle cannot rotate to any other angle, and so these three states are the entire state space of the triangle. We'll call the states by the orientation of the red vertex, red up, red right, red left. Now, we'll change our perspective a little. Rather than thinking in terms of the state space, we'll think in terms of transformations from one state to another. For example, suppose that we start with red up. If we rotate the triangle around its own center clockwise by 120 degrees, or one third of a full rotation, we get red right. That rotation moves from one state in the state space to another state in the state space. 120 degree rotation is a basic degree of freedom for this object, and we will imagine that we can apply that rotation by the click of a button. In group theoretical terms, this is the generator of the group. We click a second time, and the net effect is to transform the state by 240 degrees relative to the starting orientation. We will keep a list of all possible net transformations, and we will continue clicking as many times as we need until we see what is called closure, which is one of the formal axioms of group theory. Closure occurs when eventually the transformation gets back to where it started. In the case of rotation, it occurs at 360 degrees. After closure, no matter how many times you click, the list of transformations can never get any longer. You simply keep trotting over old ground and you never get anywhere new. The three transformations on this list together constitute a group. Each transformation is an element of the group. The 120 degree rotation is the transformation that generates the group. One convention for notating groups is to call the group by its generators written inside chevrons. So this is the group 120. Note that rotating 360 degrees is the same as rotating by zero degrees. And so we can rewrite the list with zero degrees at the top. A zero degree rotation is the identity transformation which is the quote-unquote transformation of not doing anything at all. Fundamentally, every group must include the identity. Also, we took red up as the starting state so that red up corresponds to the identity. But it's not essential to start with red up. If we take red right as the starting state instead, it means that the states now correspond differently to the group elements but the group is the same in either case. Okay, this is great. I wanna make this absolutely clear. So first of all, the state space is handed to you from the beginning and the state space is these triangles at the specific orientation. The group is, the group acts on the state space and the group is the set of transformations that acts onto the state space, but it keeps the objects within the state space. So, and a group always has to have an identity matrix. One of the elements of the group is the identity matrix. If I act the identity matrix, for example, onto this triangle, nothing would happen to it. One operation that I can do is I can, mul is I can rotate by 120 degrees about the center of the triangle. And if I do that, it goes from one location, from one basis vector in the state space to another, or from one triangle to another. If I were to rotate this thing by 45 degrees, that would 
be that would not be an element a group element because it would not keep the triangle within the state space it would move the triangle to an orientation that is not within the state space the group is the set of operations that keep the objects within the state space the same we will be very interested in what can and cannot be observed in this example we are able to distinguish the three states from one another by the different colors and so an observation tells us precisely the state of the triangle. But next, let's consider how the state would appear to an observer who sees only in black and white. In this case, the observer can't distinguish the different orientations and perceives only a single macro state, which actually contains the three different micro states. If I were to take this triangle and rotate it by 120 degrees, it would look exactly the same. And if I were to rotate it by 240, I couldn't tell the difference. In this case, I can tell the difference. When I operate one of these group elements, I can tell that it's moved from one state to another. Here, they're indistinguishable. There's no way to tell the difference. Next, consider a rotation by 60 degrees, one sixth of a full rotation. This expands the state space to six different orientations and it expands the group to six different transformations. By allowing a rotation of 60 degrees, you can double the number of, shall I say, eigenvectors in the state space. Before, there were only three orientations of this triangle, which was vertex up. Now, and, and before being the case where there was a 120 degree rotation. When you have a 60 degree rotation, it looks like this. What happens when this new state space is observed in black and white? In this case, the observer cannot distinguish colors, but can distinguish vertex up from vertex down. In other words, the state space is partitioned into two subsets, and each subset constitutes a different macro state or a different observable state. An observer is able to perceive which macro state the object is in currently. If I were to have only, if my operation is to rotate by 120 degrees, if that's what I'm allowed to do, then if you start out in a vertex up state and you rotate by 120 degrees, you will always get to another vertex up state. There's no way to get out of that um, subspace. Well, the subspace is the subset. There's a subset. The subspace is the space of generator. So the subspace would be 120 degree rotation. And likewise, if you start out vertex down and you rotate by 120 degrees, you'll always remain vertex down. You'll always remain in the set of triangles that have vertex down. If you rotate, if 60 degrees is allowed in, then you can flip from up to down. This is an equilateral triangle. All sides have the same length, A. All angles are 60 degrees. I put an X at the top. You can go to PowerPoint and put in any rotation angle. So the first thing I'm going to do is rotate this by 60 degrees. And that's what happens when you rotate it by 60 degrees. Now let's start from the beginning. And I'm going to rotate it by 120 degrees. Do you know what that's going to look like? And that is a rotation by 120 degrees. I can also rotate it by 180 degrees. That's easy to visualize how that's going to look. Just flips it upside down. AcePhysics.org. Math and physics tutoring with Dr. Hudis. What about a 60 degree rotation? It would turn any vertex up state into a vertex down state and vice versa. In other words, it also generates a group, namely group 60. This one with two elements. This is called the information subgroup. It describes transformations that are not occurring. The object is remaining in stasis at one macro state, and thus it is not undergoing transformations into a different macro state. Let's define the term subgroup, which we have used to describe information and uncertainty. A subgroup is a smaller group that is a subset of the full group. These six elements describe the full group. What subgroups does it have? These three elements form group 120, so that is a subgroup of the full group. 
Remember, the group and the subgroup are the operations that are done on the triangles. They're not the triangles, which are the states. The group is the operations. And so the subgroup is the set of operations, the identity matrix. A group always has to have an identity. And then rotate by 120 and rotate by 240. This is not a subgroup. For one thing, it doesn't contain the identity element. Therefore, it's not a group. Therefore, it's not a subgroup. Rather, this is a coset of the subgroup 120. This lecture won't discuss cosets in any more detail. We are introducing this term only to show what a subgroup is not and help you to avoid a very natural mistake. Here is the correct second subgroup. Its generator is a rotation by 60 degrees, but when it acts twice, it returns the triangle to the starting state. Therefore, it contains only the identity and 60 degree rotation. In going from 120 to 60, we didn't just enlarge one degree of freedom. Rather, we added a second degree of freedom, another generator. By the way, there also technically exist a few other subgroups which are not relevant to our discussion. Zero and 180 constitute a subgroup. Also, the full group is a subgroup of itself. And finally, the identity by itself is a subgroup. Are you in need of a great physics tutor? Dr. Hudis can help. Whether you're preparing for a high school test, AP test, or college exam, let me help you ace it. Are you an eager high school student aiming to get ahead and prepare for college level physics? Or maybe you're a college student and you want to learn even more advanced physics. Dr. Hudis can help. Visit acephysics.org and schedule a lesson today.